About three years ago, I was on the bus when I heard a conversation just like that. In front of me was a group of students from a Gael school, or a local immersion school where English-speaking kids go to learn Irish through speaking Irish at school. Now this conversation struck me as weird because I had never heard anything like this. It wasn't English, but it wasn't strictly Irish either. It was a hybrid language that I like to call Gael Scullish. Now, this language is a mixture between their first language and their target language. And the interlanguage stage, this Gael Scullish, it appears right on the linguistic spectrum between these language, languages, influenced by English and Irish, but not contained by the rules of either. The human brain looks at languages in two ways. First, the semantic level, the ideas and concepts that we want to communicate, and the syntactic level, the rules of language, language, like word order, person, tense, that communicate these ideas in a way that other people can understand. Now, research shows us that the Gale Skull kids interpret language only on a semantic level and don't even notice how they put their language together. They do this because they are seasoned strategists, finely in tune with the inherent limits of human cognition. You see, the human mind is like RAM in a computer. We only have a limited amount of, um, we only have a limited amount of attention that we can put on different things. So the Gale Skull students focus all these attentional resources on processing the meaning, interpreting it and communicating it effectively to others. This is why, in the language classroom, the Gale Skull kid hears all this language data they get the message loud and clear, but all these native-like grammar forms literally go in one ear and out the other. They are not noticed, therefore are not learned, and without a frame of formal reference, these kids are forced to improvise. Now this improvisation happens in a place called the language faculty. It's a part of our minds that allows us to construct language. And just like a grammar book, it has all the rules of what we can and cannot do with language. So left to their own devices, these kids have to write their own Gale Scullish grammar, subconsciously plagiarising the English rule book to make sense of this weird and strange Irish. Now this fusion of language allows them to express rich idiomatic English phrases, but yet adhere to the complex grammar rules of Irish. And we get such gems as Kai Shader Ash Ass for they have to back off. Their environment also encourages them to be resourceful, not allowed to speak English during the day at school. They're forced to use grammatical structures from English that they have mastered and forget the ones that they don't and plot in Irish words into these grammatical structures to make the, what they want to say. And this is how we get stuff like Ni Mai Lesh Imer Chanclea and Tashin Mufian. These things are not heard in natural Irish, but they are constructed in the Gale Skulls. Turns out that these kids are highly motivated individuals, possessing what we call integrative motivation, where a, a, a person learns the language of a valued group to earn the acceptance of that group. The thing is, the language of this valued group is far different from the native-like Irish ideal. As language teachers, we hope that our students progress through this interlanguage stage to reach a level of near-native proficiency. But what happens in the Gale School is really quite amazing. In the first few years of school, they acquire language, they acquire the Irish at a phenomenally fast rate. But somewhere along the lines, this progress slows down to a point where it almost stops. And we look at this point 
This is the point of communicative effectiveness. They can communicate with those around us, them and they can be equally understood. So there's no drive to learn these more native-like forms for, for communicating because they simply find no need for them. And who wouldn't want to integrate with such a society? This language society is liberal. It's a place where creativity flourishes and linguistically speaking, anything goes. Research shows us that Gale School kids won't interrupt each other even if they know, they won't even question each other's language, even if they know it to be ungrammatical. And this is at the point where language is created in real time. Forget the internet and social media, this is where language goes viral. Weird and wonderful things that are wrong or ungrammatical are instantly validated when they prove effective in communicating the intended meaning. They spread around the school like wildfire and soon it is these creations that form the accepted and now legitimate linguistic norms of the school. Now no one's doubting that these are great communicators, these kids, but there's a problem. Research also shows us that they are not functional bilinguals, speaking Irish after the, after the bell rings. And we have to look at why. Linguists believe that Gael Scullish, this language that they create, although communicatively effective in the language classroom and on the playground, does not meet the needs of real world communication. If we think about it, even simple everyday interactions require succinct expressions of complex ideas like emotions and feelings, like frustration and uh, apprehension. And the Gale Skull kids may simply think that these things are beyond the reach of their, of their grammar that they uh, constructed and now choose to speak English. So, what can we do about this? Well, we can, if we look at the figures here, there are about 77,000 people that um, speak Irish every day outside the school system. And if we look at our research, this 45,000 uh, or so of these Gale School kids don't really make up a significant part of this number. So, what we have to ask ourselves is, if we provided a more uh, useful form of language to these Gale School kids, would they speak more Irish outside the school? How do we do this? Well, I think we should use the skills that they already have in creating their own language. These experimentations, these formulations of rules, these cross-linguistic inferences, bring these into the classroom and harness the creativity and help them learn Irish that they can use outside. If we, we succeed this, it's not beyond the realms of possibility that we could change the linguistic landscape that looks something more like this. Okay. vastly increasing the amount of daily Irish speakers. Now, David Harrison is an esteemed field linguist and he calls every one of these daily Irish speakers and all speakers of minority languages, he calls them, um, he calls them language warriors. And I believe that. But in every group of language warriors, we have um, a radical cohort, people that are not afraid to break the rules, to drive the movement forward. I believe that these Gale School kids are the driving force of this movement, operating fiercely every day on the cutting edge of contemporary Irish language use. These linguistic deviants, these linguistic deviants um, use language and break the rules of language to create a language that they can effectively communicate with others. They break the rules of language to do what's need to be done. Now, I feel it's high time to honour these linguistic deviants. If we understand the way that they've created this language, we can then, we can then understand the underlying process of the creation of this language. And we can learn how they learn. And because of that, we may be even able to change the linguistic landscape of Ireland while we're at it. 
Thanks very much. Yeah.